Neurographia is a process created by Russian psychologist Dr. Pavel Piskorov in 2014. It is a very popular in Russia and German-speaking countries, and its effect of which has been well-researched in these countries. Pavel has been quoted saying that it is the art of world transformation and I see it as the art of positive change. Neurographia can physically capture how our inner being reacts to our outer world and it can visually transform our fear and chaos into challenges into something more calming, peaceful, and beautiful. So neurographia really connects the science with art. A neuron is a cell that carries a message between the brain and the body parts. It is the basic unit of our central nervous system. A graphic is an artistic use of pictures, shapes, and words. Russian psychologist Dr. Pascal claims that neurographia awakens dormant neurons connecting which stimulates positive change within the artist. The first step that you're going to start with is I'm going to tape down a border on my watercolor paper. Borders are so nice because they'll mask off areas and when we remove these at the end you will have a crisp beautiful edge like a frame to your watercolor. After I tape down all the way around with a nice border, I am going to think and reflect on something that I want to find peace with. Consider an area of discomfort or a challenge in your life right now. Write this down in a simple word or statement on the back of your sketchbook page. You're going to be using watercolor so this is going to be on the back and put it in pencil so you will not be able to see through what you paint on your front. Now as we begin, you're going to pick up your Sharpie permanent marker, not using your pencil, and you're going to draw from one side to the other just letting your hand wander and let the lines go over where it wants to go. If you want to, you can close your eyes for this and just continue that process wandering over the page. Go from one side to the next, from the top to the bottom, letting your hand walk the line wherever it wants to go. Let your arm move freely, filling the paper, and again, just think about the challenge and see what kinds of lines come through. This is a very expressive activity. Draw probably about six of these lines, and then you can leave this. Perceive from here, you can add some shapes. I'm going to start by adding some circles and adding a variety of sizes all over, maybe about three or four. You can choose to do this with other shapes that you prefer and just let the lines cross wherever they cross each other. I'm going to do a couple of them so you see what I'm talking about. The next step is transformation. The law of attraction states that you will attract into your life whatever you focus on. You're going to now curve out all the corners to transform your image and also hopefully your reality. You're going to turn the cause of your stress into something beautiful and positive. Check each of your lines the intersections and make sure that you are rounding out those corners. As you're doing this, you might find yourself highly focused and caught up in the moment of what you're doing. And that's exactly what you want to have happen. The purpose is to go into a bit of meditative state. 
so that you can actually stop thinking about what worries you and find some more peace. Please note that I have sped up this video. Go nice and slow using good craftsmanship. See how I'm curving all of these intersections. See how also I make my lines thicker. Kind of help sometimes when I go off path a little bit. What is happening is, is you're turning your drawing into a neurographic drawings. You're making these intersection and curves look like synopsis in your brain. That's just a little bit of science for you. You're going to keep rounding out every intersection so that you're okay with the craftsmanship that you've done. When all of your corners have been rounded out, step four is to add additional lines to enhance your composition. In this phase, you will be using your ultra fine tip sharpie so that you can add a variety of types of lines. The first type was thick, now these are thin. You do what pattern you would like on yours and where to put them is up to you. Do what you think about balance and your overall composition. You want to look at this now as a piece of art that you have control over and really this is a metaphor of your life too. You want to think of your challenge as something now that also have control over. So add lines as you wish and then round out those corners as well. Finally, to finish up your artwork, you'll be using watercolor techniques and picking a color palette of your choosing. Your color palette that you will pick from will be a split complementary color scheme. A split complementary color scheme is one that is a complementary color scheme, but you use the analogous colors that are next to it. So in this example, I'm using oranges and reds, and across from oranges and reds on the color wheel is blues or a blue-violet color. So I'm going to be using a range of those blue colors along with orange and um, reds. As you can see here, I started off with painting my lighter value colors first, and I tried really hard to balance that. I had some orange on the left and on the top and on the right, and the same way with red, taking up about 20 to 30 percent of my picture. And now I'm going to use the complementary colors with a range of values, some light blue violets and some darker blue violets. In between there, I am using a couple different watercolor techniques. I am using some washes, some graduated washes, some wet on wet, and then also I'm bringing in that salt technique. So my goal here is, is I am creating balance in this composition. Balance by the use of thicker lines used in different places, balance by the use of my lighter, um, ultra fine sharpie lines, in a balanced way, so a little bit on the right, left, top, and bottom. And now I'm continuing that on by using my colors in a smart way as well so that I can achieve balance in my whole work of art. You will choose your own color. It will be your own work of art, and it will be different from mine. So please try as you do this to reflect on your practices and see if you can use some techniques that you have learned from our class time to enhance your beautiful neurographic art. Now, if you've taped your edges down, you will want to remove your tape at a 90 degree angle. When your work is finished and dry, remove your tape very slowly so that you do not tear your paper. And if by chance your paper starts to tear, stop pulling and begin removing the tape from the other direction. When your work is complete, the final step is to reflect on the process and product. Ask yourself some questions. Did you enjoy the process? How did you feel while you were making this work of art? And how do you feel now? 